I have been trying to record this as a movie. It's an old uh, PowerPoint presentation that was done probably 10 years ago, and I just can't get it. So I'm going to try it this way. I'll be reading. MIT Reading Research, Upside Down and Backwards Reading. Before we begin, what have you heard about this topic? What have you experienced in your classroom? What are your questions about this topic? The timings are all set up, so we have to go with those. Background. Over a decade ago, and separated by location, profession, and purpose, Dr. Danica Mijevic Prelik neuroscientist from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and Stephen Round, that's me, a second grade teacher, each started investigating the phenomena of reading and writing upside down and backwards. Time and continued research brought them together through Stephen's website, pireading.com. In November 2010, Dr. Mijevic Prelik and her colleagues contacted Stephen and arranged a meeting at their campus in Boston. Stephen and his wife Susan met with Dr. Mijevic Prelik, Dr. Diamond, and assistant Alex Kim. After that meeting, Stephen and Susan were sponsored by MIT to become certified co investigators to study upside down and backwards reading. And we wait. The study. In the early 80s, two researchers, Larson and Perlenvi in Denmark, studied 66 first and second graders to compare and contrast their reading accuracy using conventional directionality and upside down and backwards directionality. After MIT's decision to sponsor the research, it was decided to replicate the Larson and Perlanvi study by using students between the ages of 5 and 10 who were in first and second grade. MIT then contacted Dr. Francis Gallo, superintendent of schools in Central Falls, Rhode Island, for permission to conduct the study in her district. The design of the study was to choose... Uh, one book that the students had not used for reading. The text chosen would need to be at a level between both age groups at the time the study was to be conducted. The students would be asked to read two different selections from the text. Each selection would be read for one minute, one minute with conventional directionality and one minute with upside down and backwards directionality. Beginning directionality would be random. The first round of study began during the spring of 2011 and was com completed before the school year ended. The second round of study began and ended during the winter of 2011-2012 when the students, same ages and grades as the first study, were at earlier stages of development. Ooh, that went well. Before studying students... The school notifies parents of upcoming research by means of an introductory letter. After a predetermined wait period, the school then sends home the MIT parent consent forms. They were written in both English and Spanish. The forms were collected and the reading research begins. Data collected is shared with the school but is not publishable without the consent of MIT. This is a picture of a boy um, in the middle of the, the uh, testing. Okay, my wife is on the right, the boy is on the left. He's reading upside down. She's timing him for one minute. This was supposed to be a movie, but it's not working. Data Spring 2011, in an email to Danica at MIT with the data update for May. 34 first graders assessed so far, 20 were reading below level, 5 were reading on grade level, 9 were reading above grade level. The chart to the right shows the data gained from 11 of the below level readers. 
what do you notice? And let's swing over here. These are the DRA levels, okay, the levels that they're actually reading, okay, and then sliding all the way over here, this is the rate of increase. All right, now these are all below level readers. So you have, and I'm just going to list them. This is an increase, 6.71%, 5 5.88%, 11.84%, 23.08%, 63.59% better, 9.42%, 51.25% better, 10.23% better, 143.82% better than the conventional way, almost 100% better on this one, and 16.58% better on the last one. And we wait. Uh, this is a long one. There we go. Sample data from winter 2011-2012. 45% of the students studied had better accuracy rates with the conventional directionality. Of those students who did better conventionally, there was one who stands out, and this is kind of funny. That student went from 44.44% accuracy down to 0% upside down. Kids that can read right side up cannot uh, read upside down all the time. Some can, but some, they absolutely can't do it at all. Uh, next thing, 43% of the students studied had better accuracy rates with the upside down directionality. Of those students who did better upside down, there were five who stand out. The remaining 12% of the students studied performed at almost the same accuracy rate, both conventionally and upside down. And once again, we're going to slide over here um, to the rate of increase. This one was 43.20% increase in speed, 91.98% increase. So that's almost 100% faster upside down than right side up. Uh, and we missed those. It's the timing. This is George Bush, and this is um, in a classroom where he was reading. I think it was close to 9-11. Uh, um, and I don't know if he was nervous about what was going on with the world, but he has his book upside down, and this picture kind of went viral. Um, and there were questions whether or not he was dyslexic, too. Frequent questions and comments. Why are you teaching children to read upside down? And I've said, answered this a million times. The answer is we are not teaching children to read upside down. This is something they do naturally. And if I were talented enough to be able to teach kids to read upside down, why wouldn't I be teaching them all right side up? How long will a child use this as a scaffold? The answer is we don't have an exact time frame. It could take, or it does take different amounts of time for different children. I've had kids that have gone a week and all of a sudden it's made sense to them. And then I've had other kids that have to stick with it for months. What happens if they don't make the switch? The answer is they will grow to be successful readers despite the superficial difference in how they hold their book. There is no correct way to hold the book. It's not written anywhere. Nobody ever taught anybody that. It's just something everyone assumes. I can read upside down. Well, the answer is, of course you can. You have already made sense of print and are a successful reader. Okay, this is going to be a one-minute uh, chance for you to see how you do. Okay, it says, what is your one-minute accuracy rate? Okay, I'll give you approximately a, a one-minute uh, time frame to try to read that.
Okay, and as you notice, that was the uh, permission slip, I believe, that went home uh, to the parents. I think that was a minute. A minute's a long time when you're sitting here staring at it. So where do we go from here? If you choose to recognize this as a possi possibility for use in your school or with your child, first collect the data comparing the accuracy, fluency, and comprehension, both conventional and upside down and backwards directionalities. And bear in mind that of the children for whom it might work, it will not work for all struggling students. Okay, in this case, uh, if you're working with your own student, you don't have to do that, but uh, inform and ask the parents uh, about this, stressing the fact that you are not teaching upside down and backwards reading. Share the history of the phenomena with the parent if you, if you must. Approach this accommodation with patience and an open mind. That's the most important thing. At the very least, allow all children to hold their books and papers in the manner that is the most comfortable for them. And once again, you're going to think about what have you heard about this topic? What have you experienced in your own classroom? And what are your questions about the topic? And I love to answer questions and I love to share my information. So uh, get in touch with me, visualdyslexia.org, visualdyslexia.com, or um, pireading.com. Thank you.